Hey, what's up, everybody? I'm Justin Young. He is Josh Deck. Welcome to 2024, and welcome to the Fast Break, the weekly podcast brought to you by Hoopsine right here on YouTube, on X, on Twitter, and all the places you find these two lovely faces. Josh, did you get the party hats out, and did you crack the bubbly on uh, New Year's Eve this year? Uh, I cracked a book and just like hung out and stuff like that. Uh, it wasn't it wasn't a riveting New Year's Eve, but I did get to you know surpass my reading goal for 2023. So that was nice. What was the reading goal for 23? Uh, it was it was a modest 20 books, and I got to 24. So there you so go. This year, there you I'm go. Kind of up to 25. There you go. I like it. I like it. Crack a book, not bubbly. That is a new uh, phrase. I feel like we need. To put yeah, let's make a T-shirt. I like it. I like it. I respect that. My daughter, I think, would really appreciate that. She's a big reader, too. So I think she's on the same reading plan as you. Well, the theme this year, or not this year, for this show is this year. We want to talk about the trending players for the 2024 calendar year. We're going to go through three levels of basketball. We're going to go through high school basketball, which along with that is travel basketball. We're going to talk about college basketball. Who's the trending player just in college basketball? Then, of course, March Madness is right around the corner. We're going to talk about that. And, of course, the NBA draft, which is one of our favorite things here at Hoop Scene, and then the NBA in general. So we're going to cover three different categories of hoops, but then two categories within those categories itself. Is that confusing a little bit? Maybe. Who knows? This is uh, Categories, of- main categories, subcategories. There we go. There we go. That's why you're the book reader, and I'm just the, the muscle, I guess. I don't know. What That's would true. I be? I'm not sure what it would be, but uh, nevertheless, of course, we're going to have you covered all the times we get ready for our travel season coming up here in 2024. We've got our full calendar up, by the way, over at hoopscene.com slash events. We're all over the place. We've got some new events uh, in Tennessee. We've got some new events in Florida. Of course, we're going to be all over Atlanta, uh, up in the Carolinas. We've got the Bama Jam. Uh, we'll be up in Louisville, we'll be in Virginia. Uh, am I forget anything? I think I, I think I got it all. I think I got it all. Uh, nevertheless, make sure you go check that out. Get your team's. Uh, date circled on your calendar. If you want to register, you can do that as well. Um, looking forward to this travel season coming up, which, as you and I both know, man, this calendar moves fast. Oh, I got the hiccups now. Oh man, we've never done a show that I've had hiccups. We'll see if this. We'll see if this lasts. Hopefully not, because that'd be a weird show. But nevertheless, we got you covered on the travel scene uh, coming up here in 2024. So make sure you go log on to Hoop Scene, check out our event calendar. We'd love to see your program there. Join us this season. So, Josh, one of the things I want to do for this show, we're going to talk about the trending players. You know, this past year we knew going into the year that it would be the year of Victor Wimbanyama. We knew that uh, Cooper Flag would be a player that was trending, and of course, within the, within the NBA, there's all kinds of guys every year that are kind of trending all over the place. But I want to think ahead and think about this year. Like, who are the players that we're going to be talking about in 2024? Who are be the talking points? Who are the trending players? And I think we both have some different ideas as to who those guys may be for these different categories and subcategories within the game of basketball. And I think we have a fun show today to kind of go through that. As we go along, if you're watching on Twitter, make sure you leave a comment below or if, on YouTube, of course. After you've liked and subscribed this video, make sure you drop your comments in there. Who you think the trending players are going to be for the year of 2024? So we'll start the bot at, at the not the bottom, but like the entry point for the high school kids. Okay, and so we'll start there. And what I mean by high school and travel with high school, I mean like the high school season, whether it means now between now and in beginning of April or end of March, depending on when you, when you end your uh, high school season or beginning of March or February for some guys. Uh, and I'm also thinking about into the fall and winter of ne- of this year of 2024 as well. And then with them travel, of course, that's the April through July, uh, you know, August uh, part of the calendar as well. So we'll start the high school category. And I feel like I feel like the high school is interesting because I feel like Mont Verde's kind of got, you know, I think Cooper Flag can maybe fall in this category. Mont Verde certainly will. They'll be uh, the team that's going to be really, really hard to beat, I think, as we get into the a national championship um, but there's a couple of guys i think that fall into this space and i'll throw it to you like who do you think will be the trending player within the high school dynamic uh this year in the calendar year of 2024 well i i don't think you can say it's cooper flag or montverde because they are just there for the next two months you know what i'm saying so i'm looking ahead to what who's going to be trending for the rest of this season and going into next year and i think you got to have you have to go at the top with aj devonsta I mean, he's the top player in 2025. He is going to be like one of the names in the high school season for the rest of this year. And then he's going to be probably the Cooper flag going into next season. Yeah, I, it's hard to argue there. I've got him in my travel ball category because I think this year will be the year of AJ DeBonza. There's yeah. no more uh, Cooper flag that's there. Last year was kind of like the Cooper flag versus the Boozers 
um, mm-hmm. was kind of the commentary, which I was all in for. I loved it. I thought it was awesome. Yeah, it was, it was the best. And then you see Cooper change his grade. So, like, you've got that. But I think A.J. DeBonsa, even with those guys in the space, I think is the best amateur player in all of um, non-collegiate and pro basketball in the world, to be honest. Yeah. You know, to be quite frank, I think he's the number one pick type of guy. And I think on the travel side, he's going to be the guy that you hear about every single weekend from April to the end of July. And then to your point, going into next year, if he even returns back to prolific, which I would assume that he would, uh, that prolific prep is going to be an absolute freaking powerhouse because of the players they have there. Um, let's talk about him for a second. And we always kind of like to think on the big picture. I know that you're a big Isaiah Collier guy. That's one of the best guys that you ever watched. And I've always kind of tapped back into history and some of the best players I saw in like the mid 2000s. I, I mean, AJ DeBonsa, does he have a chance to go down as one of the all time greats, maybe in the last 20 years in the high school ranks? Yeah, I try, I try, try and shy away from hyperbole. I like understand that. that. Because, I get that. Because we've seen it come back to bite us in the past, or in, and by sure. us, I mean just everybody in our kind of space. Um, so I, I don't know if I'll go ahead and put him as that yet, but like, yeah, there's a chance. I mean, he is he is supremely talented. He is delivered at. I mean, last year he was, should have been playing in 15U, and he was pretty much dominating 17U competition. So he is. I mean, he has showed it at every single level, at all the elite camps, at all the travel ball levels uh, every, everywhere he's shown that he is one of the best of the best. So I think that, yeah, there's a chance. I'm not going to go ahead and put that, put that weight on his shoulders right now, but yeah, That's I mean, I mean at the end of next season and be like, yep, that was one of the great careers. I'll say it. He might be for me. Like he might be one of the best in the last 20 years for sure. I think ceiling wise, somebody asked me the other day, like what my player comp was. And I, I, I was like, it's Tracy McGrady kind of, kind of a good one. And I kind of was like all about it. And I thought like his floor, maybe like Brandon Miller, which I was also yeah. pretty happy with that. I was happy not, with that. That's too bad of a floor if, if that's what your floor is going to end up being. Totally. Well, I think that's how good AJ DeBonsa really is. And, and again, I know as much as we talked about Cooper Flag, even though he, he only played 16U, I think AJ DeBonsa played 17U, dominated last year. Yeah. I don't know if there's anybody in travel ball in the EYBL that even comes close to the type of player that he is. Um, and, and I'm really boozers, just, like it's boozers and that's it. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. yeah. And they're, and they're obviously very, very talented in their own right. Yeah. But I just think it's so much better of a prospect, which leads me to my guy that in the high school ranks, I'm, I put Darren Peterson out of Ohio. Now, of course we know these guys always transfer. It seems like their senior year. Be curious to see if he stays in Ohio and he stays there. If he does, I think that, we know that all these great players leave to go play these basketball powerhouses now, especially with these mega leagues that are forming in the scholastic leagues. I love Darren Peterson. I do. I freaking love him. I wouldn't be surprised if we end up ranking him number two overall in that class. I just think he's a super scorer. I think he's designed. He has a game that's designed perfectly for the NBA. Obviously I watch a lot of Devin Booker. I'm going to go see him tonight against the Clippers, uh, but like guys that know how to go get buckets and play both guard positions. I think Darren Peterson's going to be a player that, um, at the high school ranks, if he stays, particularly at his high school in, in Ohio, could see them being the best, you know, public school in the country. Where he was my trending player, uh, that I think that we could be seeing in the 2024 calendar year. So, uh, AJ DeBonso is for you for the high school. He was mine for travel. Darren Peterson was mine for high school. Who was your trending potential guy on the travel scene for the 2024 season? I've got a couple names here, and I'm kind of thinking about it a little bit differently. Yeah. I know AJ is probably going to AJ is going to be like the guy followed by Boozers, followed by like Darren Peterson and all that. But I'm thinking of maybe some 2026 guys who are going yeah, to – last year the spotlight was not on 2026. It was on 2025 and 2024. Now it's going to be on 2025 and 2026. So a lot of those 2026 names that were kind of, you know, I guess on the back burner last year are going to step into the, the forefront a little bit more. And a guy that – I mean, one guy that I have to name is Mustafa Diop from here in Atlanta. Yeah. Um, he's going to be playing with Game Elite. I think he's, I mean, he's already gotten plenty of national attention, but I think that's just going to continue to grow. Um, and then a guy that, that I think is going to really go from being uh, outside of, you know, the industry's top 100 right now or top 75 or whatever they have for 2026 to inside of it, firmly inside of it, is Kevin Thomas from down there in South Florida. He plays at Sage Mont Prep. He's a six foot seven athletic shot maker kind of player. I don't know who he's playing travel ball with, whether it's Knight Riders or SOH or, or Florida Rebels, but it's going to be one of those Florida um, shoe company teams, and I think he's going to really pop this spring, and that's going to be a name that you hear about pretty much every weekend, after every camp, after, you know, this, that, or the other. He's going to be on everybody's 
standouts list, top performers list, whatever. Yeah, yeah, that's that'd be fun to watch. I, I thought about the twenty six class as well. Obviously, I'm a huge Brandon McCoy fan. I think I yeah, that that's another name that's going to be he's going to be all over the place. We're starting to see him pick up offers kind of left and right. He's really good during the holiday season. Um, well, Brandon McCoy, I could see him being a guy that's a real trending guy in the travel ball. Uh, very likable, uh, smooth game, and love to see him um, in those matchups coming up here. In the, I think in the I think with Brandon McCoy, the conversation is going to be starting to bubble up whether he's not the number one player in the class or not. I mean, he's so good every time I watch him. Man, I think so that's good. going to be that's going to be the conversation about around Brandon this this travel season, this summer going into June where all the camps start to pop up and all this stuff. I think that's going to be the buzz around him is, yeah, is he the number one player? Is he the number one player? I think his game is so mature and so well crafted that he could be a guy like we see like what the, the added weight that comes with playing the USA basketball does for guys and the narratives. And, and he's a guy mm-hmm. that fits so perfectly with that USA basketball culture, or I could see that really kind of taking him to the moon. Uh, this yeah, season. I agree. So, I like your idea on 26. I am with you. I think that has a chance. But again, I, I think 2024 calendar year, at least the prep ring, this is the year of AJ DeBonsa. It really is. Yeah, completely. Uh, and it, I mean, yeah, we agree. I mean, we, we have him covered all year round, right? I mean, I have him for the high school, you have him for travel. So AJ is going to be dominating there. But I, isn't that like the sign of like the great player that he is, right? Where some guys are better in travel and yeah. some guys, maybe like Brandon McCoy, maybe better at the high school ranks. Um, where I, like a guy that I love, Tune uh, Yesifu, who I freaking love, who I think is better at the high school ranks than he is the travel ranks, where like, a guy like A.J. DeBonsa and even Cooper Flagg to a degree because of the way Montverde structured, where you're going to maybe yeah. see like maybe the more um, – the bigger numbers, if you will, with the travel stuff when he's playing with his main United team versus Montverde, where maybe if you only seen him play Montverde, he may just be one of those games because Montverde's so loaded – that Cooper Flag puts up like ten points and eight rebounds and three assists, and if you're just a casual watcher, you're like, that guy, that's the guy. But you don't yeah. understand the complexity of Montverde. Where AJ DeBonza on prolific prep, where they've got like five number one guys on their roster, yeah, and, like, and he's slaying it every time he steps out there. Yeah. And then you move up to travel ball, and uh, he's just equally as, as talented. So I, I think he's yeah. the guy. If you're into mock drafts and stuff like that, I think he's the guy that's going to lock himself for that number one pick uh, moving forward. Really. Tremendous guy, and, and and again, like you said, if Brandon Miller is the floor comp player comp, then I think we've got yourself a, a pretty stellar player. Um, all right, let's talk about tri- let's let's not talk about travel ball. We're done with that. Let's talk about college ball is what I meant to say. And within that category, again, it's a little tricky. I, I put two categories. I put the I put college ball, then I put March Madness, which I feel like those are two different seasons all in, the, in a, of itself. So let's talk about college ball, and that could be this season that goes until the you know first of April, or that goes into next year as well. And like, is there a player on your radar or players that are kind of uh, in this space that could be the trending? Like Zach Eady right now is probably like the face of college basketball. Yeah, and that- he's, he's got to be number one on my list right now because yeah. he's he's going to continue. He's going to be the dominant conversation going into April, like or if going into wherever Purdue stops playing basketball because he's probably going to repeat as national player of the year. So I think right now he has to be like the top of the discussion. Um, more guys I have is Kevin McCullough at Kansas. I mean, he looks like he's probably the most important player on a Kansas team. that's going to be probably a number one seed. And then RJ Davis is balling out for, um, for North Carolina. So I think he's a guy yeah. to look out for as well. Do you trust Carolina deep in the tournament? <clears throat> um, I don't know right now. Honestly, I don't know that I trust anybody deep going deep into the tournament because everybody's kind of faltered to a degree. So, yeah. so no, but also in a way, kind of yes, because right now I don't I don't know where to put anybody because there's been stumbles and ugly kind of black marks on people's records and stuff like that that I, I just kind of don't know who to trust right now. I had a friend of mine hit me up. He's like, hey, do you have a best bet like in some of these college games? I'm like, dude, I none. None. None whatsoever. Yeah. I, I don't want to touch them. I have no idea. It's so unpredictable, uh, I, which to me I think adds to the storylines. of. Oh, it's going to be a blast. March is going to be great. Yeah. Let's get to that in a, in a second. My, my pick for the trending player within NCAA, I'm moving my, my scope to next year, okay, to next season. He's not there yet, but – Listen, if you watch any high school basketball at all during the holidays, I think people, the nation particularly, is starting to say the things that we've been saying for the last two years about Ace Bailey, 
Like, is he the guy? Is he even better than Cooper Flag and the trajectory? And we've said that, yes. Yeah, we think so. We just yeah, see that's that's something I still think about is, is like, man, if we're thinking about this from an NBA perspective, is there more untapped potential within Ace Bailey than there is within no. Cooper Flag? That is something that I think about all the time. The first time I saw Ace Bailey in person, I remember I flew, I got straight off the plane and I went over to Campbell High School. I think it may have been the regional tournament. And I was there with, you know, some other guys. And I was just like, holy crap. Like, this dude is him. Like, he's got it, you know. And he was just a sophomore, I think, at the time. Um, or maybe even a freshman. Nevertheless, like, a yeah, he was a sophomore, sophomore. Yeah. And it, we saw that. it was They played up in, in New Jersey. They played uh, Camden High School. And Ace went bananas. And it was like 37 points and 17 rebounds or some crazy. Yeah, I mean, go thing. check out what he did at City of Palms and this, that, and the other. Like Everything. Everything where I feel like that narrative is moving into that space. I think there's a lot of pot committed opinions on Cooper Flag, um, which I understand. I totally get it. But I think long term, Ace Bailey, if he's the number one pick in the draft, I kind of get it. And I do. So my thought, and again, I'm getting ahead of myself within college ball. Rutgers is not a program that's trending maybe ever outside of the, the Northeast. Like I know I'm not seeking out Rutgers basketball out here in the West and the old Pac-12 country, I guess it's the old Pac-12, I guess that's what we're calling it now. Um, but, like, I don't look look for it. But now I will because Ace Bailey. And I started to think about him in the same context of, like, Ben Simmons. Like, like Ace Bailey, I think the question with him, is he consistent and does he win the games that really matter? And I think that's going to be the narrative that we want to see. Now, Rutgers, of course, is going to be in these big primetime matchups. I think because of the buzz and the, and the stuff that we saw – over the holidays, and and I don't know how ratings go for high school basketball, probably not very great, but people were talking about him where I could see Rutgers getting some nationally televised games or they're playing, and you know, I don't I haven't looked at the preseason tournaments, like where they're going. They play in Hawaii, they play in the Bahamas, yada, yada, yada. Like I could see where he's a guy that we're talking about a lot as we start college basketball because there's an excitement level there. But does he take the road of like a Ben Simmons at LSU where – you kind of forget that he played at LSU or even Isaiah Collier for that matter. Like they're losing more than they should. And we're seeing him now kind of slide down the draft boards a little bit, but we know his talent is better than what we see. And is he going to be a better player in the NBA than he is at the collegiate? Nevertheless, I could see where Ace Bailey is a trending player um, as we start the 24, 25 basketball season this year in the calendar year. So Ace Bailey for me uh, was my pick. That was a lot of justification for my pick. No, I mean, it makes sense because, I think you and I are kind of on the same boat with Ace Bailey. It's like yeah. long-term potential is like if he kind of just – it's all, It's not even a matter of like uh, – I don't want to say cleaning up his game, but just kind of tightening it up. You know, like he's got yeah. he's got to kind of take the screwdriver in and kind of – Well, there's a maturation out. process too that has to happen yeah. there. And I feel like we, we've seen this now. And that's a credit to like, you know, to, to, to Tree Ankrum, their head coach, and like – who's a tough guy, like doesn't let a lot of stuff slide. Like I think Ace needed that in a good way to help develop him and, and mature his game. And now we've seen great event after great event after great event. And my question now is who has the stones to put him number one? Because if we do talk about, we look at things in the context of the NBA draft. Does he have the ability to be the number one pick? Yes. Does anybody have the stones, us included, to put him number one overall in the 2024 class above Cooper Flag? That to me is the big question. Yeah, I think that I think the difficulty with that is right now, like Cooper, like they're, they're not too far different. You know what I'm saying? Like it's not like sure. like Cooper Flag also has all of the stuff that you like out of out of sure. um, Ace Bailey, but right now Cooper just kind of has shown it on like I guess not. I don't want to say bigger stages, but he's I guess more prominent spotlight like against Cambuzer in like all these like highlight matchups, right? Like he's playing at Montverde, so he plays against, you know, the, all these popcorn-worthy teams consistently. Like, that's all the games they play or all these massive games. And Cooper kind of has shown, I guess, more of that than Ace has to this point. So, I guess, like, if it's kind of a push, then you might as well just go, go ahead and keep the number one guy as the number one guy. But I do agree. Like, that conversation should be had. And I think that the gap between them is not as vast as some may have thought in the in the past. I agree. Yeah. All I know is that I think Cooper Flag, or uh, I'm sorry, Ace Bailey is going to be shaking Adam Silver's hand 
before Cooper Flag. Oh, easily, so. easily, yeah. He, oh. And he is certainly in the number one pick conversation. It just depends on you know how his days at Rutgers go. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. That'd be a fun bet too. Like, what's the over under for win total at Rutgers as freshman year? Well, of course you got Dylan Harper there now too. So, um, pretty scary, man. Pretty scary. How many Rutgers games do you think you'll watch next year? Probably, probably a bunch. Depend. I think it just depends on how many how they start, right? Because like I started watching a lot of USC games this year, and then now I've kind of been like, all right, like pick it back up, yeah. guys. Like, I think Bronny joining them too kind of changed that dynamic a little bit. Not it. Hopefully, not, not hopefully it changes it for the better. You know, like oh, yeah, once we'll he gets see. more acclimated and all that. He had a big game the other day. So, well, you mentioned that March could be really wild this year, more than usual. I think last year was pretty wild. The last couple of years have been pretty wild. I think this year falls right into course. I think it's been an absolutely insane year, where like my daughters and their strategy is always picked by mascots and colors, and that seems to work yep. better. Than, you know, their dad who does this for a living and all the analysis that he does seems to always work, work better than me. Um, but like, is there a player or players that you think will be trending this year in March? Like, no, one's talking about FAU in January of 23, right? Nobody outside of Boca Raton. And then all of a sudden now they're the darling. Now they're national ranked and, you know, a lot has changed for them in a year. Like, is there a team or players more so players that should be trending in your position uh, as we look ahead to March. Yeah, I think Colorado State has got to be Let's go. at the top of that list. And I think, you know, zooming in even further, Isaiah Stevens has got to be at the top of Colorado State's to, you know, talk about list. You know what I'm saying? He's probably uh, – he's arguably the best point guard in the country. I mean, he is the, the engine that makes that ship go. Right now they are ranked 13, I think. I just saw them beat New Mexico last night. That's a good New Mexico team. Great. Uh, yeah, Colorado great. State is – 13 and one now um, they're only lost. I forgot who they lost to, but I mean, they've beaten really good teams and all this. So I think they are a team that could be, you know, the FAU of last season or the San Diego state of last season or the whoever of last, you know, few years, because I think they are a team that has all the pieces in place to make a pretty significant run. You know, it's funny. It's interesting you say that, right? Like here we have them ranked 13. I look at GMU will be my, all the guys on GMU. I'm going to talk about them in a second. Are they going to be ranked appropriately in the seating where I feel like, you know, other years past because of the conferences they come from, that they're seated like as a five? But as Colorado State, are they worthy of a two or a three, right? Like, are they going to get those highly ranked seeds in the tournament? Uh, that'd be interesting to see because, like, we've seen like this balance of power and this balance of talent happen over the last decade, but I don't feel like it's ever really reflected in the seating. So then you get an upset, but then you're like, is it really an upset? Because that team was better. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I do think, I wonder if this has anything to do with last season with San Diego state making to the championship game, but I think that the mountain West right now is starting to kind of get more of the, the national attention as being a legitimately good sure. conference because there's always good teams that come out of that conference. So I think now San Diego state almost validated that conference is worth last season. And now I think that's reflecting on Colorado state with their 13 yeah. ranking and all of this, because if you think about it, like two years ago, regardless of what Colorado State, if they had the same resume as they would have now, they probably would have been like 25. You know, it would have been like, all right, yeah, they're good, but they play in the Mountain West. But now I think the Mountain West is starting to get more more of um, notoriety or a positive reputation or whatever. And there, you see that reflected in that 13 ranking. I think that will reflect in the seed as long as they don't drop any games that they probably shouldn't have. Yeah, I think that's a fair point. I think it's a fair point. Um, you mentioned zoom in. I, I've got my zoom in on JMU with Mark Vyatton's career. We saw them at the very beginning of the year uh, get a big win against Michigan State, and I think they followed it up with a double overtime win against Kent State. And then they've been mm-hmm. undefeated, they're 13 and 0 uh, or 14 and 0 in the mm-hmm. ranked top 15 in the country. Uh, and they're rolling. And I mean, I look at their league and I'm like, man, could JMU into the tournament with like one loss, two losses? Like, I think it's not out of the question. No losses? Could they be yeah, in which top eight? Like, yeah. They could, they very well could be. I mean, I, 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 the only reason I bring up one or two losses is because of the, because of the unpredictability uh, of this entire season. But I look at yes, this here sure. and, you know, listen, Mark Bynes and his staff, they recruit Atlanta. We, they've got their two of their best guys or two Atlanta guys, Terrence Edwards, a guy that I freaking called 50,000 teams. Like, you guys need to recruit this dude. He's freaking good. And he's up there and he's killing. He's had four great years up there at Jam. You know, I think he's averaging like 17 points a game. T.J. Bickerstaff, fifth-year senior, played at Boston College. I think he was at 
Uh, was, did he go to Drexel or LaSalle? I was – anyways, never like those, those uh, Sandy, Sandy Creek kid, um, love TJ Bickerstaff. He's played with us in every category of things that we've done over the years. Um, I really like those guys. I think they're very fun to watch. I could see those two guys – um, in particular on this JMU team being guys that, that are really picked up in March Madness and are really kind of like the darlings. I really like this JMU team uh, to make some serious runs and to play at least through the second weekend, if not deeper, into this year's NCAA tournament. really like this team a lot, and I'm a big, big, big Mark Byington fan uh, for what they do up there. JMU's tough too, man. That's a tough place to win. And, yeah, uh, sure. Turn that into a program. And as, uh, a, as a whole, as an entire athletics department, I feel like JMU's kind of – had us, you know, a steady rise over the last couple of years, yeah. right? Football team's oh. good. Basketball mm-hmm. team's good. Like, they, you know, across the board, they're getting some really good, significant contributions from everywhere, every department. How's the baseball team? How's the baseball team, you know? How know. are the Dukes? Really sure they're good. At, hey, at this, rate, at this rate, I'm sure their swimming and diving team is great. I'm sure their golf team is great. Like, I mean, We need to bring that up next, next show. Colorado State versus JMU, who wins the game? Um, I'm going to go Colorado State just because they've proven it against, like, I mean, they beat Creighton, they beat San Diego State, they beat, or, yeah, they beat Creighton. I forgot who, it's one of the other teams they beat. They didn't beat San Diego State yet. Um, but they've beaten a lot of really, you know, I guess, brand name teams in tough situations. And sure. I feel like it has been building with Nico Medved. They've been awesome for the last five years. And, like, now this is, like, the culmination of them being their most awesome. So I'm just going to go Colorado State. Yeah, Nico, Nico's good people. I mean, honestly, you look at both those programs, they're both led by two great, just great dudes and guys yeah. that are. Really I think the moral of the story is that if your program is looking for a, a coach at the end of the year, that there are plenty of good options. For sure. For sure. Uh, all right, let's move ahead. Let's talk about the NBA draft. Are there any players for you that you could see me really trending? We talked about Isaiah Collier was a guy that we were seeing him kind of move in the wrong direction, going down from the projected number one pick by our friends over there at Draft Express, Jonathan Gavoni and his team. Now down to eight, which I thought was a little bit knee-jerk reaction, to be honest with you. Um, but nevertheless, like, is there a player or two that's going to be trending as we talk about the NBA draft coming up in 2024? Yeah, if you're, if you're looking for a guy that's going to be trending as like a top five to maybe even number one, top somewhere in the top five is Cody Williams at Colorado. I mean, wow. I think it reflects that we had him at number two or three in our rankings Something like that. We had him in the top five, regardless of our of our rankings. And I think took me a while. To get there. Took me a while to get there. Yeah. I think it's it's taking taking NBA draft people a little bit to get there as well. But I mean, if you start to look around, start to kind of poke your nose around NBA draft stuff, he is a guy that's consistently popping up in six, five, four, three. Hell, I, I even seen him. I saw my number one somewhere. Um, so he's a guy that's popping up as a you know legitimate top five contender. So if you're looking for a guy to be, you know, ranked super highly, Cody Williams. But if you're looking for a guy that starts to get a lot of significant buzz as a lottery pick or a top 25 pick or just a first round pick in general, Jared McCain right now is really building his case at Duke. He is balling out. He is really taking command of being like a primary scoring option for the Blue Devils. So if they're ascent, you know, if they keep trending upwards, you know, on the back of Jared McCain's ascent, I think he's going to be a guy that come in the postseason, come March, April, May, June, whatever, you start to really hear his name as a lottery pick, as a whatever. Whatever he is now, he's going to be higher than where he is now. I'll say that. He gets the Duke bump a little bit too. Yeah, maybe. I mean, honestly, maybe. I mean, if you're going to – Duke was kind of not floundering, but they were not living up to expectations. And now that Jared McCain has started to kind of take off, Duke – has um, taken off with them. I think they're back at 14 now. Um, they were, I mean, on the verge of not being in the top 25 at all, but Jared McCain's kind of turned it on and helped write the ship for the Blue Devils. Yeah, it's fun, it's fun watching him play because imagine him and Kylan Boswell, they were together at Corona Centennial as well as um, Donovan Dent, who's over there in New Mexico too. Those are three very fun guards as we watch them kind of come up as underclassmen over there at Corona Centennial. Um, you mentioned Cody Williams, by the way, trivia question. He is an alum of the same high school as a very once uh, as a starting quarterback in the NFL. Any idea what school or what quarterback that is from Perry High School here in Arizona, where my kids go to school? I don't know. Is one of your kids plays in the NFL? 
No, no, no. Sorry, not my child. No, I know. But, I know. I'm just kidding there. I, I cannot think of it. Brock Purdy. Brock Purdy. Oh, really? Yeah, Brock Purdy. That's Perry fun. High School. Yeah, fun fact. It's an uh, yeah, bear the JMU of Arizona high schools. <laughs> the Dukes of the Desert. I love it. Yeah. I love it. Uh, I'm going to go trending international. I think I think we're going to finally start to see an international draft kind of perk back up in the era of Nikola Jokic, the best international player uh, maybe ever in the NBA, dare I say. Um, the guy's unbelievable. And we haven't really seen the international ranks kind of rise up, which I think is an indictment on where we're at right now with college and high school ball. Like, it's just okay. And I could see where a lot of these guys yeah. come in. And, and if you – you know I struggle with – pronouncing names like i like alexander sar because he's easy but the rest of the guys <laughs> i'm freaking i'm dead in the water like yeah. there's a guy france um zachariah uh Rikosser, i don't know three years something like that oh, yeah yeah i mean there's a lot of guys that i think are going to be coming up in this draft that maybe you're not familiar with i know i need to go watch some film of but i could see this being a very international heavy uh lottery draft in 2024 and a lot of guys it seems talking. like it seems like that's the trend i mean last year Wemby was the talk of the entire the entire draft. Like, I feel like it was all women, like women, Yama. And then you were like, Oh yeah. And Brandon Miller and Scoot Henderson and the Thompson. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, it was yeah. that like, style. And I think, I don't know if it's going to be like that this year, but I think you're going to see a lot of international flavor, you know, in that top five and that lottery and that top in the first round, I think it's going to continue. Honestly, I think American high school ranks, I think across the board, we always talk about it. It's kind of like, yeah, it's good class, but like, there's no, there's not been a ton of like blow away guys outside of now Cooper Flag and AJ and stuff like that. But like, yeah, I think yeah. it could help. That's, like I watch a guy like Jordan Goodwin here with the Suns, who you know played St. Louis, was you know not really a top 125 guy, but like stayed the course and did the work, and um, you know has found himself as a really like valuable veteran in the NBA. <laughs> Excuse me, as opposed to like those high end guys that kind of come in. So it'd be interesting to see like how it shifts with that. Yeah. All right, last topic. Who's going to be the trending player in the NBA? Well, I mentioned Jokic. Like, I love the NBA. I love – you know I love the NBA. If you watch this, I love the NBA. I watch it every freaking day. I think the NBA has more stars in it than NFL, than MLB, than soccer. Like, there's so many great players in the NBA. And it's hard to, like, maybe even place the crown on one guy. But, like, the LeBron era is kind of coming to an end. The Wimby era has kind of been okay off to a start, it, but not. It's really not started, started yet. I would say, like, I know, he's I know, like, he was the talk yeah. of the town, but like, it's not started to the point where he's like dominating on a great team or anything like that, right? It's like you can kind of see it starting to kind of go up the hill a little bit, but it's not reached its ascent or anything like that. It's not even like really reaching its its climb yet. I, I think this is the year of Anthony Edwards. They're the number one team in the NBA right now. Every okay. He is absolutely in a zone that's untouchable. Um, they've made some significant changes. He's matured his game. He's getting better at the things that he's got to get better at. I do think that if if Anthony Edwards was in Dallas where Luka Doncic is in, where I think we'd have a whole different conversation about Anthony Edwards. Honestly, I do. Or like if he was Minnesota, just in any major market, right? Like if he was in New York, totally. or if he was in LA, or if he was in Chicago, or wherever. I don't know. If he was an Atlanta Hawk, do you think he'd be in the, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Atlanta yeah. sports are kind of are kind of cursed, I feel like, besides the I one where he was a Hawk. I think that'd be the worst thing. For so him. I think I think that if he were on the Hawks, he would just suck or something like that. You know, something yeah. like that. His power. Yeah, if he played for the Bulls or somewhere like that, like I think the whole world would be talking about Anthony Edwards more. But just yeah. go look at his last 10 games. The guy is in his zone. That's that's on a different planet. Uh, I think this is the year of the Ant Man. I don't know if they can win the title, but I sure like what Anthony Edwards is doing. I thought that he was going to be the guy beginning the season that was going to be trending. I do think that he's got a chance to be the MVP in the NBA. Not maybe this year, but in this future. Got that yeah. kind of talent. I, I think the Anthony Edwards era uh, is going to be really fun to watch with like him and Luca, like this new wave of guys that are under the age of uh 25 that are they're going to be start to take over the nba so for me i'm planting my stake in that i know you don't watch as much nba as i do but do you have anybody yeah that kind of i focus in? my focus is mostly on college but i do have a couple names maybe that are off maybe not off the board but they're not like the it's not necessarily because of on the core stuff it's like first one is john morant because like you saw all sure. the buzz around him when he came back and now he is now that he's back with memphis like they've kind of it feels like they've kind of righted their ship a little bit more like they picked up and won a couple games and all this and like 
whether it's positive momentum or he's getting, you know, the spotlight put on him or criticized or whatever, there is going to be a lot of John Morant talk for the rest of the year. And then I think another guy that you have to really look at is a guy that people have been texting me about. It's Emmanuel quickly. And I think it's because that trade is so has been scrutinized, honestly. Like, and I don't, I don't know that like whether you're for it or against it or right in the middle, I think it's going to be a lot of like, all right, how are the Knicks after they traded Emmanuel quickly? And how are the Raptors after they acquired Emmanuel quickly? Because he seems that trade all seems to be centered around Emmanuel quickly. I think everybody else in it is kind of. Oh, I mean, RJ Barrett is pretty good, bro. He is, but I think I think that if you polled Knicks fans, is like who who do you who are you most bummed about losing in that draft or in that trade? I think they would say Emmanuel quickly. And I think, yeah, like it kind of feels like he is the centerpiece of that of that trade. And I think that is going to be what makes him a focused on player throughout the rest of the season. Fair. I didn't think we'd have Emmanuel quickly in this conversation today, I'll be honest with you. No, I mean, no. that that one's crazy because, like, maybe it's just because I, I have some Knicks fans' friends, but they are really bummed about losing him. And then it just kind of – that's kind of driven the NBA shift for me recently because I listened to some podcasts about it and all this stuff. So it's just like I feel like he has not escaped my purview despite me not really watching the Knicks ever. Totally fair. I, again, back to my point about Anthony Edwards. If Anthony Edwards was a New York Knick, I think he'd be talked about in the same conversation that we have, we talk about, like the absolute freak. Yeah, and I completely agree. And I think that's why that spotlight's going to be shined on a player that might not be like – he's not an all-star player or anything like that, but it's because he came from the biggest market. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, totally, totally. Well, I feel like we've covered all the bases from the NBA all the way down to the high school and travel ranks. It's been a fun conversation. Talking about the players we think will be trending in the year 2024. Let us know who you think will be trending at any of these categories, whether it's high school travel, whether it's NCAA, whether it's March Madness, whether it's the draft, whether it's the NBA. Love to hear your thoughts. Make sure you leave a comment below or over on YouTube. Make sure you like and subscribe and do all the things. Hit that retweet button or reshare or repost or whatever the button's called. Uh, do us a favor and do that. We want to make sure we get that content out there to you. Again, our 2024, 2024 event schedule is up. Our Hoopsing tip-off is coming up. Uh, first, gonna make sure you want to lock into that at Sony Sports Academy. Go look at our calendar over there, hoopscene.com slash events. We'd love to have your program join us for the Hoopscene tip-off in the end of March. So uh, go circle those dates, go get your team registered, and Josh Tech and I will see you in the gym. Josh, this was fun. This is a good conversation. I like where we went with this one today. It was fun. Yeah. We'll do it again next week. Thanks, Josh.